How's everything going? Great, man. There's there's no uh, no issues. We are uh, kind of living the dream right now, man. Can we realize right now is our time to uh, kind of make that sprint and try to make a little bit of money and feed retirement type things. You know what I mean? Yeah. So um, we've just been the luckiest family in the world, man, to be honest with you. We just Good keep deal. catching breaks. Uh, whenever we think there's a low, we catch a high and uh, we're just blessed, man. Really, it's, it's been it's been awesome. So right now, everything's great. So next week, everything's going to go to shit, man. That's kind of how it goes. <laughs> right, exactly. I know. That's the way to always this. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, yeah. Yeah, no well, complaints. Good, I'm glad man. to hear it, man. That's awesome. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm glad I got you on here because I had, so far, I've had Brandy and Matt Schleich. Yep. And then I uh, had Matt, uh, Mark last week. And <laughs> um, like something I was thinking of, like uh, you're a cross trainee. Mark was a cross yep. trainee. I'm pretty sure Brandy was too. I want to say, Kevin is was that right too. or no? Yeah. Yeah. Um, and then Kevin's going to be on next week. So I'm thinking, you know, he was a cross trainee and I was just, I was, I have always said this to people that, and we kind of touched on it last time, but it's amazing how it, it's really about the individual as far as this job goes, you know, like it can be, um, you can come from anywhere, you know, you don't have to start from the very beginning as a, as a tech P you can come from anywhere and, crush you know just like you did just like kevin did mark did brandy yeah. of course did um so what i want to talk on tell me where you started like what you did before you got became a tech p and then kind of that transition into you know where you were conventional and then how you got to the 17th and all that yeah yeah so um i was a prior ammo troop if you ain't ammo you know what i mean uh, <laughs> right right <laughs> right. So uh, I came in as an ammo troop and I, you know, that part of my story is about seven years in the Air Force doing uh, ammo troop stuff. And, you know, it was fun. It was a good ride, but it always kind of had that longing, wanting to do something more and really not quite knowing what that was. It, that was just an odd feeling, feeling like you're kind of complete, but yet you're not like there's something else missing. And that was, yeah. that was my ammo troop time. You know, so I did, um, did seven years of that, spent some time in, you know, uh, Nellis air force base, Bengalum, Germany. I met my wife, Cindy at Edwards air force base in California. And, um, before I'd met her, I was, I was married to my, my first wife. We we're talking mm -hmm. earlier. And, um, I always said like, Hey man, you know, if I ever, this didn't work out and kind of want to take care of myself and I want to, soul search and find out really what I want to do. And I mean, that's kind of where it's at. And so when my first wife does, or first, you know, marriage dissolved, um, I started looking at other avenues to do something fun and um, something to kind of fill that need. And it was TACP, PJ, you know, combat control kind of thing. I didn't know much about any of them, but I did know right. this, like I was going to train and I was going to make one of them. I didn't know what the heck they were. I really couldn't tell you the difference between them all, to be honest with you at the time. Right, right. Well, crazy. This is probably early 99 or 2000, I think it was. Okay. Um, and I said, hey, man, I'm going to do this. And then, and then, you know, in that, I started training towards uh, TACP assessment and selection, I think it was. I'm not even sure if it was assessment and selection or just a package. Uh, but yeah, yeah. I started training towards that. I got picked up and got orders uh, to go to Herbert Field. So um, that was. That was fantastic. I was in the great shape. I was probably, you know, mid, nah, early 20s, JD. You know, I mean, I was a little older compared to most of the guys. But, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah I've, been in, I've been in seven years, you know, at that point. Going to tech school, doing all of that stuff. And then in the end, a funny story about um, being in the right place at the right time and kind of getting lucky. All right. So um, I was the... Um, what is it, the flight lead or something like that? Like, I was the oldest dude, or the, the most experienced guy, so I right. ran the flight, right? Eagle yeah, flight. Yeah, by default, you were, like, put in charge of people probably at tech school. They're yeah, like, hey, you've been in long enough, you're going to yeah. watch these guys around or whatever. Yeah. Yeah, I didn't know. They didn't know anything either, man, but they followed me around mostly, so it was great. Um, but since I was a cross trainee, I was the only one, if I remember right, in my class and at that time, ATC was going through this weird, like, reorg structure on how they did orders for the Air Force. So yeah. all my guys that were in the class with me, they got picked up and they got assignments. Like, boom, getting nailed out for assignments. And I never got one. 
and this is rolling up. Um, this is rolling up, and it was, I think it was a week, two weeks before graduation. And, and you, still have, I, you still have no idea where you're going. No clue. So I don't know where I'm going, and and, I, and I'm uh, I'm messing with uh, swales. He was one of my uh, instructors. I'm messing with swales mm -hmm. and trying to yep. trying to figure out where we're going to go. And he's helped me out. And uh, finally, he had bugged this lady over in Texas, AFTC, so much that I had her number at this point, and I'm calling her. I'm like, hey, what's up? What's up? What's up? Finally, I get a hold, and she's like, listen, I got two slots. One's at Fort Benning, and the other one's at like uh, up at uh, the hundred Fort Campbell, I think it was something okay. like that. And uh, she's like, "Where you? Whatever. What do you want to do? Just where do you want to go? I'll put you in there." And I said, "Fort Benning. Hey, that's airborne school, right?" Yes. Put me in for Fort Benning. That's what I want to do. And she did. And I got assigned to the seventeenth, which is fantastic luck. You know, hell, I didn't even know yeah. what the seventeenth was. You know, at the time. So, um, got assigned to the seventeenth. Wait, 17th, so we'll go back up. So, what was the deal? Like, why were you the only one that didn't get orders? I think it was because I was the only uh, prior or not prior service, but uh, yeah, maybe it was prior so you're service. You're older, you're cross training. Guy. They didn't quite know what to do with you. And so with all these other guys, I think they got picked up when they did the transition of how they do APC stuff, and oh, I was just okay. kind of left floating out there. Gotcha. So I didn't, I didn't get a slot, man. So if you know, it worked out fantastic. Yeah, you know, for sure. You know. So when you got to the seventeenth, was that we were still fifteenth? And I mean, we were still third um, brigade, third ID, and Rangers it was. in the same squadron, right? It was. And if you remember right, yeah. it was A flight and B flight. That's right. right. Yep. It was That's a 17th right. A flight, and that was in support of 3rd ID, 3rd Infantry. And that's yep. me. That's where I'm going. And super excited. And then I didn't even know there was a B flight. I didn't know what the hell that was, man. <laughs> right, right? right. But when I was in tech school about to graduate, September 11th happened. Okay. I was going to ask you like, be, what the time yeah. frame was of that. Yep. I just happened to be walking by the break room. And there was a couple of instructors right there, and they're watching the TV, and they said, get in here, get in here, which wasn't normal, right? Sure. Usually they're smoking your ass. And right. I go in there, I'm like, what is it, Sarge? And he's like, you need to watch this. You know what I mean? And that's that's that was my first glimpse of what was really kind of going on. I don't think it settled wow. in right away, but um, I do recall that. Going up to uh, Benny, uh, you know, my first supervisor, um, I don't mention his name, man. I really liked that guy. I really did, man. Uh, and I, I called him and I said, hey, uh, is it, my name is Matt Green. I'm Matt Green. I'm, I'm coming up there. And he was my sponsor. And uh, I'm excited. And, you know, I know you got jump school up there. And I'm just going to tell you right now, like, I'm going. Like, what can I do? <laughs> and, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm pretty motivated, you know. Yeah, yeah. And uh, probably too motivated now that I really think about that. But he uh, he said, Never. yeah, man, just uh, let me know when you get here. And, uh, you know, if you want to do that kind of thing, then, you know, maybe, you know, you can work something out. And I'm like, oh, what in the hell? What am I getting into? You know, yeah, that, so, that, that, not very promising at that point. Oh, no, it wasn't, man. <laughs> no, it wasn't. But uh, that was the, the kind of, you know, dulled the edge a little bit for me. I'm like, oh, crap, what's going on here? You know, I yeah. thought we were going to do something cool. So. But well, uh, was, we you know, were lucky to have you. Get, it was you say you were lucky. We were lucky to have that unit right there because we were able to, like I said before, we were able to pull the talent from that unit to kind of augment up, not augment, but like, well, actually it was kind of augmenting at first. Yeah. And then eventually, you know, you guys just kind of transitioned over. I don't even know when did it split? Like, when did we go to, when did they turn into the 15th? I don't even remember. That, that. happened. That happened. I was probably an RSC when that happened, man. Like okay. didn't that happen a lot later on? Way down the road. Um, yeah. I think it happened way down the road. Okay. And um, yeah, because it was a 17th pure for a while. And then you had yeah. the other the OLs, right? With the SF right. guys. Um, yeah, yeah. OLB all the way to E, I think. Out on yeah. the West Coast or something like that. Yeah. yeah. I just remember um, being in A flight there and looking over at the next at B flight and saying, wait a minute, who are, who are these guys? And what are they doing? Yeah. You know I mean, I want to do that. That's kind of where I want to be. So. Well, talk, yeah. tell me, tell me about that. So, how long were you in uh, B flight? Excuse me, A flight before you transitioned over. Like, what? How did that happen? Like, did you do some stuff with the fifteenth first? Excuse me, the third brigade guys first, or like, yeah? What, talk, talk me through that. So, you know, I, I went through prior to this discussion. And I kind of wrote out some timelines. Sure. And I realized there is a bunch of time in the middle that is so gunked together because there's just so much going on. I'm with <laughs> you. This, I'm with this, you, dude. It's crazy. <laughs> the same it? way. I know. Uh, I was talking to Kevin about that actually. and said, man, like 
I really should have made it better notes going through life. I don't know, man, because when I really sit down and want to like have a conversation like this about it, it's tough. Luckily, though, in this beginning part, and I'm looking at my notes right now, in my beginning part, like I remember that fairly well. It was the, you know, 2005 through 2010, mm -hmm. just crazy packed in there. But yeah. my, when I first got in there with third ID, um, which was 17th ASOS A flight at the time, still under mm -hmm. ACC, um, I did a, a trip to Kuwait with those guys, which was great. We came back, did a couple of rotations. I got to go to pre ranger school. Nice. I got to go to jump school finally and Pathfinder. And it was cool because the B flight, you guys got a lot of the slots, but if the guy couldn't go to a, a school or something, or if you just seemed to make it through course, army courses, you guys, you know, the B, B flight would let you go. Yeah. So I'm like, I'm not failing for school. So <laughs> right, right. I, I just kept getting them as much as I can because I really wanted to show my, you know, that I was qualified to come over there and work with B flight. That's what I was really trying to do. So I uh, see Maggie walking around the background there. Yeah, yeah. Um, so um, I got to go to pre-ranger and was fixing to go to ranger school when they yeah. called me and they pulled me out and they said, hey, man, you're not going to ranger school. And I was really broke up about that because I wasn't an ETAC yet. Okay. Uh, I had made I wasn't ETAC yet. And they said, well, you want but you to But that's like the perfect time to do it because you're not, yeah. you don't have a whole lot of responsibility, you know, to be at that level. So like you're still a kind of a nug. So that's yeah. the time to knock all that schooling out. But yeah. Then why did they pull you out? Well, they pulled me out because stuff was starting to heat up, and uh, we we're starting to we we're starting to put forces there in Kuwait. I think it was, and the time of JD was one hundred percent perfect. Again, I swear I'm the luckiest guy in the world, man. So they sent me off to school. I come back, I'm an ETAC, and then they sent me to Kuwait, and then we do the invasion. So, so I mean, was I was time brand time. new. Oh my god, yeah, that was a three yeah. time for by time. So what was that? March, April? Is that March? Yeah, I think so. Invasion? Something like that. Yeah. Again, these dates, uh, these dates escape me just like you. Yeah, I know. It's like uh, it's kind of all right together. So that was so you were on the and I've always said that I'm glad yeah. you brought that up because I've always said that you know we talk about a lot about rangers and we talk about a lot of soft guys doing stuff in Iraq, but really if it wouldn't hadn't been for third ID, nobody probably would have done anything without tanks, without like full up armor Indeed. support like that. We probably wouldn't have been able to have the freedom of movement that we had in Iraq, don't you think? Yeah. I mean, you tell me kind of I what think we so. Did, you know what I mean? And it seemed to me like it was a time when they said, "Hey, we need to give our maneuver, maneuver brigades, our maneuvers elements, a, we need to give them their war now." And, and it kind of felt like that to me. I don't know if that's the case or not, but it worked out great for me because I got to drop a ton of bombs and I got to got some fantastic experiences and. Um, that you was know, a perfect time, yeah, because you, uh, yeah. you got that JTAC status right before. Was it still yeah. ETAC? It was JTAC at that time, right? When you got... I, I know when I graduated as an ETAC because I still okay. have ETAC patches. <laughs> yeah, that, I guess and that I, makes sense. And I don't okay. remember when it went to JTAC. You recall? Mm -mm. Nope. It was a thing that happened that I was like uh, – I remember when it happened. I was kind of like – Joint, huh? Well, joint. It makes sense, but I guess I, I kind of like it was able to bring everybody else in that was kind of on the cusp of having their right. own JTAC program or being the controller. Pro you know, they wanted to make it an all-encompassing kind of a qualification, so every service, you know, who whichever they were, I guess, could do it. I don't know. Yeah. Well, tell me, tell yeah. me more about uh, um, this the, when you your third ID deployment. I mean, that's to me that's fascinating because I've didn't really do a whole lot with that world. Um, you know, even when I went to Bosnia as a conventional dude, it was just more like um, we were just kind of in Hummers, you know, light. It was more like light stuff. So tell me about yeah. were you in, were you attached to an armor uh, section or tell me about that? Yeah. So we were, um, we were attached uh, to an armored column and we, and we're, we rolled across the border up into all the way up into Baghdad. But the only comms vehicle we had was, you know, an Air Force Humvee. Soft skin right. Humvee with a jerk 206 pilot. And uh, it's kind of surreal, I guess, when you're in the middle of tanks and Bradleys maneuvering and shooting, and you're in a soft skin vehicle uh, taking <laughs> rounds. Yeah. You feel like, you like, I don't know, man. We had these sandbags we put on the floors, and I thought it was dumb because I got in the way. Yeah. But, uh, Man, I felt like I was grabbing those with my feet every second because you just watch the stuff go up. And I just, it was pretty, uh, pretty crazy. I, yeah. you know, I did the, uh, 
you just see a lot. And um, that whole push um, with with Third ID, it took a long time. Yeah. And we went a long ways, as you know. Yeah. yeah. Um, and so it's driving, just like when you're walking on patrol and dudes are falling asleep in front of you. Drivers are falling asleep in vehicles and you're doing the slinky effect. I mean, all this is going on day and night, high energy, high adrenaline, taking right. fire on occasion. Um, I knew I know that was my first time being ar- like receiving artillery. Oh, really? And uh, I- I'm going to tell you, man, like, you-, you know, we've all had a lot of experiences, but I'm going to tell you, artillery. I understand why they call that the king of battle. It is the scariest damn thing, you know, because yeah. uh, you you can see them coming in, you know, and hear them, but you don't know where they're going to come next. And it's a bit of a mind. So fuck, random. You know? Yeah. Like, you you know, you never know where, you know, you could you could try to hide over here. You think it's going to be a good place, but that could be exactly where it's going to hit. I mean, yeah, yeah you never, never know. Desert, man. Yeah, it's just yeah. crazy. And uh, so, you know, like everything, it's just like. Laying in, you know, a patrol base behind a 240, you're wishing for the Mongolian horde, but when the Mongolian horde really shows up, you don't want them there anymore. You're so, right, right. You know, really wishing. It's okay, man, bring it on with some sort of action, but when it's happening, you're like, holy shit, it's scary. Yeah. And uh, it's it's crazy. But um, so I, I earned some respect uh, for, you know, the artillery and surface to surface fires at that sure. time, for sure. And they hit us pretty hard a couple of times, which was great. But, um, you know, uh, rolling up, I was driving. I wasn't supposed to drive. There was a, we had a Romad that was supposed to drive. Yeah. And uh, I'm not going to mention his name, but I didn't trust him. Okay. <laughs> to do the right thing. And sure. I said, no. get in the back seat. I'm driving, right? So I'm driving this. And I'm, I'm one of my staff sergeant or something like that. Well, sitting beside me is Meet Fairchild, Colonel okay. Fairchild. Yeah, yeah. And I love the team. Silver Star recipient. Oh my gosh. Great, yeah. great guy, right? So awesome you need to you need to talk to him one day. You need to get yeah, him. I'd love him. to. I'd love to. I think he's down in Tampa right now. Uh man, so him and I are here and we're driving for days, man. And just, you know, highs and lows and stuff. And I remember the sun coming up one day and I looked over and uh there's shoes just in the desert, just a random shoe. And I I asked me, I'm like, uh, hey, me, why do you think there's only one shoe? Like where Where's the other shoe at, man? Right. And it's that like constant. And after you say something like that, you see, you know, random shoes everywhere. And we did. We must have saw thousands of them. I'm not kidding. Yeah. We get up into, I think it was Baghdad, but I'm not sure. We get into one of the cities. I don't remember which one. And it's, we tore it up pretty good before we rolled mm-hmm. through there. And then with Cass and with, uh, you know, uh, the Bradleys and the tanks and uh, the organic firepower you guys had was probably oh, amazing. It's am- just amazing uh, show of like U.S. force. I'm just um, just amazing. I'm mean, really impressed with those guys. Uh, okay. Anyway, so we roll up in there and there's an APC burning and uh, there's it's like burning out the top and on the ground in front of us. You know, I don't want to be too gruesome, but there's a boot with the rest of the guy, like a guy's legs sticking out just a boot. Meat punched me in the arm and said, "Hey, Maddie, that's uh, that right there is why the UNC wants you in the, in the oh. desert." And you know, it was one of those moments, man. Uh, it probably doesn't sound very funny uh, to anybody else, but it was the funniest thing I've ever heard at the time, and definitely one of those things that stick with me. Because um, it doesn't dawn on you that. that literally these people are getting blown out of their shoes. I mean, that's like, yeah, you know, that, that's what's happening. Like, they're yeah, they pretty real. You know? Yeah, for sure. We got we got the we got pinned down on a bridge one time. Uh, we were trying to cross this bridge. I can't tell you where it was at either, man. But we ended up backing up because we thought that there was enough holes in the bridge. We didn't know if the heavies could make it across that thing, the, the tanks and stuff. So we had pulled back and we were kind of taking cover. Me and I were kind of taking cover by the the kind of the abutments of the bridge. You know, pretty heavy yep. stuff. And they're raining some more, uh, either more, either mortars or artillery. I don't recall. I think they're probably mortars because they're pretty quick. Um, and it's it's raining down all on us, man. And uh, I remember grabbing meat and going, "Hey, man, can you get? He's a big dude, man. I'm like, can you get a little lower? You know, I didn't want to get hit. So you get down lower. <laughs> at that time, shrapnel was just kind of rolling at us. It wasn't like lethal or nothing. It's just coming across the ground. Yeah, yeah. Well, meat had grabbed one and threw it to me. I'm taking cover. He's like, Matty. And he throws it to me. And I catch this. And he's like, it's still hot. And as soon as he said that, it started to burn my hand, you know. Oh, my God. I threw it back and was like, man. 
it was probably 10 years later. I'm walking through the 17th and he happens to be there for some sort of visit or something. We both had left. I'm walking down the hallway and I see him at the other end. I'm excited to see him. And the first thing he does is he tosses me that chunk of shrapnel. He had He's like, it hey, on. man, you remember that? He had it on. Yeah, yeah. Isn't that crazy? <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah, yeah. I forgot about the whole thing until he brought it back up, actually. Isn't so, it crazy how, like, cool. you – and, and it's, a, it's a good point. Because you get into these really extreme situations, and it's funny at the time because that's just the kind of people we are, I guess. Um, yeah. Or you're, you're – it's it's scary, but then after you're done, it's like, man, that was scary, but now it's not so scary. Um, and then you forget about these times. You forget about those little times, and then somebody retains that and will bring it up later on, and it just, like, brings you right back to it. And that whole – you get that whole kind of – feeling of what, what you were going through at the time, I'm sure. Like it was probably like yeah. that whole bridge thing just probably shot back in your mind after he threw that to you. In the hallway yeah. Something. That's crazy. Yeah. And I don't, I don't understand that, but I don't I, I talked to a lot of guys that had a lot of funny stories, yeah. you know, even Brandy and them brought it up and said, Hey, oh, yeah. we should have one on just some of the funny crap we've seen, you know? <laughs> yeah, exactly. I mean, be pretty interesting. So how long, how long were you guys in Iraq that for that initial time? I think it was three months, right? It was April, March to May. I don't, I don't, you know, it was March to May. We flew out of Baghdad. Um, what are, you know, it was great, man. We felt yeah. like, we felt like we did something really cool. We went in there and yeah. just destroyed a bunch of shit and left, you know what I mean? <laughs> right. uh, but it was, it was pretty awesome. A lot of, uh, a lot of learning, man. I've learned quite a bit, you I'll know, bet. especially as a brand I new we'll do that to you. Yeah, back. <laughs> yeah, it figured out pretty quick. Uh, we, uh, you know, we did, you know, wearing those damn chemical suits and. Oh, yeah. Uh, remember, I mean, just wearing them for. Yeah, yeah. Oh, By the time I got straight, to Iraq. You know? well, I, was make, I was mentioning it um, when I was talking to Brandy and Matt. Um, I, I was in Afghanistan this whole time, so I didn't, we didn't, I didn't have to go do any of the chemical. By the time I got to Iraq in like 06, <clears throat> all that, you know, all that chem stuff was gone. So I didn't have to deal with any mop gear or anything like that, but. I can just remember hearing stories about you guys having to, you know, and almost mop four, whatever mop three, I guess, whatever level is where you're where you not masked up. But yeah, yeah, what a, that just it just seemed Kim, NBC stuff just really just puts a damper on everything. Like it just makes it so much more harder than it, you know, than it ever should be. I guess I don't know, but you remember yeah, did you guys ever have to mop? Did you guys ever have to get your full mop four? And I think we had a couple of alerts kick off where we had to wear. Throw the mask on, but most of the time, everyone got over it pretty quick. I mean, most of the time, we're we're just wearing the, the garment and we're just pissed about it. Really, it's kind of what it seemed to me. <laughs> right, Probably you know, hot I mean? as hell. I remember the one time I got a chance, and I've been wearing my boots for uh, you know a couple of weeks. I don't know. You're afraid to take. Yeah. You're not afraid to take them off. You just know that you're not supposed to take them off. Right. I know what you mean? Yep. It, we stop at a like a stop. And um, I'm like, and I and I told me, and I told uh, told the other guys, I said, I'm taking my boots off, man. Like I'm shit. Like I gotta see what's going on. My feet are like right. got to be mush right now. As soon as I take my boots off, man, I'm sitting home with the we receive incoming artillery. You know what I mean? And I'm like, Dang. I knew that was gonna happen, man. Yeah. Like, I just knew it was gonna happen. I don't even know why I even bothered with it. I thought I lost one of my boots. Thank God Dang. I found that. You know what I mean? I don't, yeah. I don't know, man. There's a boot. That's perfect anyway. timing, though. That's exactly what you know. If you, it's exactly the what would happen. You know, you're like I haven't yeah. taken them off in weeks. All right, let me. All right, we got it. There's a little lonely action. I got this is this is fine. And sure enough, you just get hammered by artillery. Yeah. <laughs> Someone said something one time about uh, you have you know hours of boredom followed by you know moments and seconds of just pure chaos. You know. Yeah. And. Yeah. Uh, you kind of start to get, no one say get used to that, but you start to understand like, okay, like you start to accept it, I suppose. Sure. You know? Sure. And, uh, yeah. And maybe you can kind of look forward to it after a while, but, uh, it's crazy. Well, um, I mean, it, like you said, it, once you kind of like you alluded to, once you survive those initial kind of couple of scrapes or skirmishes or whatever, you start getting confident, you start getting more comfortable and you're like, yeah, let bring on the next one, whatever. You know, you feel like you're, yeah. especially with, in the difference between like, um, and you guys were like, we kind of alluded to before you guys had immense firepower behind you. So if anybody was going to mess with you, you had enough capability just inherent 
forget about like cast on station or anything else, but you, your just organic firepower was enough to just take out any threat. I'm sure. Yeah. Those nobody really great, stood a chance. Yeah. You know, and they weren't refined either. And I look back on it and that's well under, way under trained, like yeah. dangerously under trained all, the entire group of us. And we're just a bunch of kids out there with a lot of heavy stuff, you know, right. to be honest. I mean, it's just amazing that, not more bad stuff happened really i, I remember sitting in be, before we rolled out <laughs> sergeant major was handing out hand grenades and uh he said uh maddie you, you guys your team need hand grenades and i said yeah yes we need hand grenades and uh sergeant he's like yeah no you do not need hand grenades and i was like well we're getting them anyway so we got hand grenades and this is right in the middle where i had taken my I think they're DCUs and I cut my pockets off the bottom and I was sewing them on the top yeah, with yeah. dental floss. I was in the middle of that. And I said, yeah, we need hand grenades <laughs> and, uh, and no business, honestly, and no training at all with a damn hand grenade. Right. I'm yeah. getting them right. Yeah. Uh, anyway, I got but them there. Is- taped up. Go no, it's a good point. That's, I mean, we just kind of talked about that before too. It's like when I was conventional and it's nobody's you can't really blame anyone it's not really um you know people only know what they know and they only train how they were taught to train so um right. but yeah in the conventional world when we were in i think now it's a lot better but when when you and i were conventional um you didn't do like like the hardcore realistic training that we did in the set like when you came over to, to wow. the rangers or when i was 17 and, uh, and I, you just, you do feel ill prepared, you know, to, yeah. to do anything like that, you know, which is a good yeah. point. I mean, it, it's like I said, I think it's changed now. I think they're doing a lot more stuff as far as um, standardized training for young guys when they first come in. Um, but yeah, man, like like you said, like just the 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 simple thing is like getting hand grenades. Like, okay, so how do I tape them up? Where do I store them? You know, which hand do I use? My strong hand? Do I use, you know, weak hand? Do I cover the spoon with my thumb? Which thumb? You know, it's like. How do I throw yeah. it? You know, all that stuff. Um, it's you just kind of like fumble through <laughs> it, you know, until you figure it out. But yeah, that's I'm, well, I'm glad you brought that up because that's a great point. Oh, it was crazy. I, I know, uh, you know, that soft skin Humvee, man, we, we were getting shot at for quite a bit. And the only yeah. time that our vehicle actually got hit was as a friendly fire. And it's a guy, he's standing in front of my vehicle and aiding into the ground. <laughs> and it disabled the entire vehicle, it hit the right belt. I don't know. A ridiculous thing. It was a uh, oh, he disabled it. He disabled the entire vehicle. Yeah. Like what kind of weapon was it? Just it was a five five six. It was a, uh-huh. it was a it was a long barrel, long barrel. Uh, like an M sixteen. You know, yeah, M sixteen, and it went to bounce off the ground. Five five six green tip, and it cut two belts. Didn't hit anything else. Blew a, went out the top of the. Uh, <laughs> I was like. What the f-? You know, anyway. of all the stuff that you went through, that's what disabled your your yeah, you, just, this he, little soft skin Humvee out in the middle of all these tanks and armored Bradleys and everything. Crazy. <laughs> I was uh I was like I said, I was driving and my door wouldn't stay shut. You know, like remember the plastic handles? Yeah. And sure. I'm and I'm cranking on that thing so much that it's about to give. Because yeah. I don't want it to come open. You know, I just yeah. prefer not. Not wearing seatbelts because I want to be able to get out of it. There's those kind of things. Windows unzip because I want to be able to lean out. Well, I'd engaged a couple of times driving, you know, like targets and known and suspected, right? Right, right. And I don't know. Knowing what I know now, ridiculous. But <laughs> right. there was this guy that popped up over this wall and he hosed right next to us and nothing hit us. But I went to return fire. And when I popped back out to shoot, after my first round went off, <laughs> my magazine fell out of my gun. <laughs> now, listen, we're driving. Back at it, like two mile an hour. And I was like, what? And I grabbed it and I was like, bah! and I go to light this. And my magazine falls out, JD. And, and uh, I had to stop in the middle, hoping this guy will pop back out, yeah. run back, grab my magazine. Oh, because it fell out of the want- truck. I leaned out the window. And oh, it fell okay, out. Yeah. <laughs> and what it was, you know, what it was was I had a 30 round magazine with a closed bolt with one in the chamber and I threw a fresh mag in there and it was a compressed. So it wasn't completely latched in there. I mean, so now, we, you know, you learn you only put 28 or 29 rounds in those things, you know, right, right. you want to make sure you got a little bit of play. And uh, yeah. 
I just again, didn't know at that time. Again, lesson. These are lessons that like, uh, and we always, I always default back to Ranger. That's because as far as combat, as far as like good training, that's really all I know is like you know that stuff. So yeah. Uh, and it's even fault that uh, like a young ranger private would never make that mistake because it's been beat into their head, you know, don't, don't put 30 rounds in it or, you know, or hey, this is how you load your Mac, you know? So yeah, I kind of going back to what I was talking about as far as like training goes. Yeah. It's, it was, it's amazing what we did in when we were conventional again, it's really kind of no fault of our own because I mean, you, you can only, you're only trained as highly as, you know, you're trained. So, I mean, if, if you, if you don't receive that training and you don't, you just don't know, I mean, it wouldn't occur to you, you know, this thing holds 30 rounds. So why wouldn't I put 30 in it? You know, I'll put it in my magazine. Pouch yeah, man. You know, it gets dangerous when you don't, you don't know what you don't know, or sure. you think that you're as good as you need to be. And, and maybe right. you know, yeah. You know, it's good to be humbled every now and again. I certainly oh, was that sure. day. That, well, that, <laughs> that's a good, that's a good point. It It's, it's good to be humbled, but it's also, just it's always a good practice to be humble you know just to be like all right i don't yeah. know everything i'm open to suggestion i'm open to any kind of you know training or whatever you know you don't, nobody knows okay. everything for sure okay so you were um you did that you went to iraq with third id and then you rotated yep. back so when how far did you guys go again with uh, third id or did you transition over to the to b flight after that yeah so i him i was so pissed about not going to right <laughs> Yeah, yeah, whatever. Oh, yeah, but, yeah. So when I got back, I said, man, you guys got some range. And they did. Mm -hmm. I went in uh, 03. Okay, um, so you still went while you were with the, uh, A Flight. Yep. I Good. went while I was with A Flight. And then when I got out of there, I made the intentions heavy that I was like, hey, I really would like to go and uh, see what's going on next door to B Flight. Sure. So I talked to uh, Jazz and uh, Sergeant Ray. And, Everybody that was there at the time, I don't even remember, and said, this is what I want to do. Like, what, what was it going to take for me to get there? And uh, and end up getting kind of – I think I augmented a little bit, or they let me come on some cast trips for a little bit. There was just so much going on at that time, J.D. And you yeah, remember, yeah. Like, there were, I think that you know they were happy to have me at the time because it's like, let's just move him over here and let him work with us a little bit. Okay, let's, let's put him in the – Let's put him in the fray. Yeah, it so, was really fluid crazy. at that time. It wasn't really um, – having us all in the same unit would made it real easy, you know, so you could switch yeah. flights without any kind of official anything at That's all. You know? Yeah, yeah. crazy. And, but, yeah, that was a good pickup. That was good. Um, so then you – how long were you in B flight? Or how long – excuse me, how long were you at battalion – before did you guys do any deployment? You went, you did some deployments at battalion. I, I remember. I did. I, I was with uh, Seco. Okay. I did, I did. I did one rotation with Seco. Oh, let me see. I got there. When was that time? Remember Two that time with Seco. you broke your? Did you break your leg or your arm? It was my leg. Your leg. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. God, that was math. That was good. That was uh, that was that was when I was in with RSC. I think I was on Team Three. Uh, what, no, well, wait a minute. No, because yeah. you remember you broke your leg and then I rotated. I went for two weeks. I took your I, I went for you to at a battalion rotation. And then you were so <laughs> I remember saying, like, dude, you cannot go. You are uh was that was it we were in recce at the time or was were we That's right. I think I was recce at the time. Okay, I, that might be right. Now that I think about it. Yeah, I think it was. Um yeah, but uh I was like no, dude, you wanted to go so bad. Your leg was still broken. It was yeah. still in a cast. And I was like, dude, you can't go. And then uh, I ended up going for like a couple of weeks, and you just came. You came anyway, or something. I can't. Or it was. It was almost at the end of your your healing or whatever. So I think you were probably yeah. ninety percent. And uh, you rotated over anyway. And I, I was like, yeah, all right, see ya, high five. I'm out of here. Yeah, <laughs> it was like two weeks later. Um, They're trying to hold me back on. Um, they weren't going to let me go at all. But, you know, yeah. I realized there wasn't any oversight of me. I, you know, I mean, there was, but there really wasn't because the army was doing the medical stuff. And, and, you know, I remember as well deploying kind of without orders. Like we were just all the get time. there. All the time. And, yeah. um, so I just cut the cast off and said, I'm going. Now, I remember when I got back. That's we such did, a maddie thing to do. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It, 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 I paid for it later. I like it healed up. We did that. Uh, we did that whole rotation up around the BCPs, up around Pakistan, up in uh -huh. the mountains. Uh, we sat so on that line. Feeling it then, man, on the sides of them hills, and that uh, it was a lower, lower leg break. So, 
it uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, he would kind of mess that up there. I paid for that for a while, but you know, I just, I wanted to go with the team, man, and that was sure. uh, that was the main thing. You know, and the other thing is, you start to realize you don't think that you're irreplaceable, but you realize, you know, it's important for the team to be whole, yeah. and and you made the team whole there by going over there, uh, but you were taken away from what you need to do here too. You know, you you, so both. we had yeah, to kind of sure. do something. So, yeah. and it would have worked out, um, but I just knew that I knew that we could, I knew that we could do it. So, we no, I'm glad you did. Uh, that, that that was, uh, yeah. um, and I kind yeah. of, I didn't want to hold you back, but also sometimes you know, as a, sometimes you have, we have to have our our peers, our buddies, kind of talk some sense into us sometimes. Like we we think we're doing the right thing, um, right. not to say you were doing the wrong thing, but. Um, I was like, I felt like let, just I want to give him a just a couple more weeks, just let him heal up because I was yeah. almost ready to let you go because I know you know I know how much of a hard charger you are. Um, but I was like, well, let me just do this for a couple of weeks, let him get a little more healing time, and then uh, it ended up working out. Obviously, <laughs> yeah. you probably could have healed up a little more, but there was I no stopping you at that off. point, man. At that time, you were like yeah. ready to go, and yeah, and like you said, we would just go and like the orders would come later, so it was, it was kind of a, yeah. It worked out pretty good, man. That was uh, that was fun. I mean, that's like I said. Inherently, that's how you are, though. That's like, wow. You would rather put up a little pain than let your team down. You know, you were you're the kind of guy that would that wants to be there, and you know, they needed a JTAC. You were their JTAC. I wasn't. So you know, like you said, to make the team whole, you had to, you had to do it. So I, yeah. I think it's, that was a good it's decision. Good, I think. So tell me about was this team three? It was either Team 3 or Team 5. I think it was Team 3. Yeah. So I did a little work with Team 1, Team 3, and Team 5. But before that, I was with Seco. I was Seco's JTAC. And, did you guys uh, deploy it all uh, as Seco? Yeah. And uh, I think I got two deployments with those guys. Um, that was great, man. I'll I tell you. JD, I'm going to tell you, man. I, I learned more from working with Ranger. And also, Grant gained so much respect for them, um, even to this day, today. You know, I mean, I do, I still do a little bit of work with, uh, I still get to see guys in the community and do some stuff sure. with them here at Bayside. You know, they're just, I would trust them uh, with anything that has to do with violence and getting it done right, and because right. they are very good at that. And oh, I'm yeah. just, just amazed every time. Um, and it's still, I mean, I got a lot of respect for those guys. And you do the same way. We worked with. Uh, you know, everyone but the Marines, really. I never worked with the Marines, but uh, any of the SEALs and top-level guys in the Army and um, SF, I go back to Ranger any day of the week. Those yep. guys are fantastic. Yep. Yeah, so, I feel the I, same way. Was, like, uh, they, like you said, those other guys, are, they, they're good. Um, but there's just – it's it's almost not fair because they – it's almost like regiment – makes it th that way you know like there there is no yeah. room for they don't even let any leeway in they're like this is what you're going to do otherwise you're going to go down the road you know we're not going to put up with any shenanigans you know if you i mean it was v they're very quick to get rid of dudes who are not following the standard and you know not keeping up so they're, yeah they're really good at kind of you know culling all that uh chaff or whatever but sorry i didn't mean to cut you off but oh you're right and you know i, I contribute you know, if you look at our you know, constantly deployed unit 17th, right? Yeah. You look at our casualty rate, JD, it's pretty low. I mean, honestly, yeah. I mean, we don't have a ton of casualties. And I, you know, I attribute a lot of that to the customers that we support For are sure. going out and very specific about what the hell they're doing and are going to have every advantage to bring yeah. everybody back. And, and it was, I mean, that was great. Yeah. It just, um, yeah, it was great, man. So I, w I wouldn't change one bit of that. Two two rotations with uh, Seco. Um, then I went into, I think it was a battalion reconnaissance. Um, okay. Did some stuff with them. Nice. And then I uh, really wanted to get over there and kind of do some stuff with you guys in RC. So I was, I was uh, you know, I think it was you and uh, Q that uh, brought me in because you were running RC at the time for that. Yeah, I think Brandy had moved out. There. And then I took, yeah, right. I took over for Brandy. And yeah. man, we had a good crew in there. I always tell people, it's like, man, when I took over, it was, um, I, it wasn't like, can I get these guys to do stuff? I was, I had to like hold you guys back from doing stuff, like you and Kevin and Mark and like, and yeah. like Des was in there at the time, and like Richie Des. Douglas was, he rotated yeah. through there, 
And I'm just like, you guys are just so mm-hmm. like such hard chargers that uh, I'm like, no, you can't, no, we can't do that. Not right now. No. Hold on. No, I'm like, just, I'm pretty much just trying to like stop you from just, and not, not in a bad way, but like, there were so many good things you guys wanted to do. And I, I just, yeah. I was just playing catch up the whole time, which is phenomenal for like a leader or whatever you want to call it. But I was like, I, it was, you, we were all kind of doing our own thing anyway. So I was like, this well, it was like a dream unit, man. It was, you guys were like so motivated and so squared away. I mean, it was just, it was really cool. It was good, man. And we, yeah. we learned, we learned quite a bit in there and uh, you gave us the, yeah, I'm going to stroke you for a second. You gave us the freedom to, yeah, I am. So you gave us the freedom to kind of do what we want, but I'll tell you the biggest thing, and, and Kevin and I have talked about this before, and uh, I even um, have these discussions with my kids, JD, um, self-sufficient, being self-sufficient. And that was the one thing that you would uh, kind of preach on us and say, hey, man, you want to go do that? Go do it. But learn how to do it all and be make sure you can do everything so you can take care of your own stuff. And you're 100% right because, you know, every man, every person in that team on that flight was busy doing yeah. their own thing. And even though you might need somebody's help to get something done, if you can do it on our own, then that guy can do his own shit. And then we can all get more stuff done. So I le- we learned quite a bit about that. Kevin and I have talked about that in the past as well, about just being self-sufficient, man. That's important. So we carry that on now, you know what I mean, to make sure. Yeah. Um, there's times when you need to bring a friend, you know what I mean? For you sure. You go a lot faster on your own sometimes. Yeah. But, yeah, you guys, I, cool. I didn't even have to, like I said, I didn't have to say anything to you guys. You guys were always so, like, 100% squared away at all oh, times. Man. That was no need to, you know, police up after you at all. So, yeah, it was really yeah. nice. So let's see. Um you were in all those teams, but when I, I want to talk about two things, one, and these might be the same, the same time or the same incident, but there, you got ambushed when you were in team three. Yep. Tell me a little yep. bit about that. That was a good one. So, uh, I can see it on the map exactly where we want, but it, we call this like, I forget the name of the valley that we kind of rode up in, but it was essentially we were breaking the rule of um, a rule of patrolling by coming back the same into an expo route, making it the same. So there's no black and red routes. Right. So there's only really one way in, one way out. And we knew that. So as I'm, you know, the deal, we were planning the routes for the teams. I could see that this was a fancy. We were driving through a fantastic ambush route. <laughs> right. And, uh, and I'm like, this, this is great. So, we had, uh, or I put on some TRPs up on the hill, um, which came in handy later. So it was fucking, that was fantastic. But um, we moved through there in a um, Hilux convoy, and we were running with uh, uh, OGA. Okay. We went through there with OGA. So, you know, there was kind of. a ton of locals with you, a bunch of trucks. Dude, yeah. And you know you're going to fight. Like it's happening. Yeah. And that, yeah. that was great. And uh, I typically had every asset that I wanted right there, probably more than I really needed, you know. And, sure. uh, so that was good. Um, but we've got these brand new Hilux trucks uh, that were up armored now. Because before, we remember the old half windows? Yep. You yep. had to shoot out of the house. These ones were the full windows, and they would actually come down a little bit. You could roll them down. Yeah. And brand new suspension, turbo Hilux. These things were fantastic. And we were all a little bit excited. To have these brand new trucks. I think the Navy built them. Yeah. I can't remember. Right. So we got this truck and it's badass. And uh, we're going into this fight and we go. And I think the fight, I think the, uh, I think it was a dry hole. If I remember right, I don't remember anything significant happening there. Maybe, maybe we got what we needed or maybe a couple of strikes or a couple of, a couple of shots fired, but nothing that fantastic. Or maybe on the way there. Yeah, I don't remember what it was. It was pretty insignificant, though. It was one of the many, right? But yeah. rolling in there, I'm scanning with AC-130, and he sees these hot uh, bed rolls up on the up on the um, the high ground, not far from where I laid in some TRPs. There was also a small road at the top of this, like uh, you know, along the military crest of this hill. And as we're coming up in there, I kind of marked those and said, "Hey, make a couple of steer points for the fixed wing." So went up there, did a thing, and dry hole. And on the way back, we stopped the convoy for whatever reason, right, right in the middle of where those uh, hot spots where those bedrolls were. 
And I'm talking to the aircraft, and I was like, this isn't good. And uh, it was Chris Lee that was uh, yeah, my, yeah. Uh, team, right? I like yeah, that yeah. dude man, a lot. Yeah, he's great. Chris, and I was like, Chris, tell him we can't stop here. Don't we're not, We'll stop here. We don't want to stop here. And uh, I think it was a broke down vehicle or a flat tire. I don't remember. I was like, we don't want to stop here. Push one through. And it was too late. We already stopped. You know, you had all the all the guys, the OGA guys, to kind of corral. Yeah. So we get out, and I'm pulling security outside of the the bed of the truck, and then we we take heavy, heavy, heavy uh, close range uh, RPK fire. It was pretty intense. So the guy driving, uh, another RSC guy, George. Uh, he's up in Bragg with the Army guys now. Okay. Yeah, we know. Fan- yeah, fantastic. Great. Guy. I know who you're talking about. Great dude. Yeah, we can. Yeah, man. Uh, that guy right there, it was cool. Uh, he got a chance. We were running those little, uh, um, I think they're H and K, little two or threes. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. With yeah. Us. And he was thumping dudes on the hill with that uh, <laughs> while I was bringing in or uh, working with the A10s to bring them in. So right. we're getting peppered down pretty hard with this RPK. Well, Chris Salee was on the floorboards with the sat radio trying to get me some more air, uh, trying to get some more aircraft and sitting and sit right back and letting them know what's up. But it was yeah. so loud in the truck because they were peppered inside of that truck. So I, you couldn't hear anything. Oh so he God. got down as low as he could and he's calling back to let them know what's up and trying to get me some more air. Yeah. So I stuck my head in there and said, uh, hey, Chris, uh, you know, you want me to you go hot on these guys? He's like, yes, please. So we brought in, I brought in A-10s and uh, with guns, brought them in with guns. And then brought him in with some heavy, um, uh, I think a Mark 82s or something up on top of the hill as well. I figured they'd probably egress up the hill. And then we sent the local guys, uh, those GA guys out to kind of sweep the hill. Uh, crazy, crazy time. They, uh, they're actually rolling hand grenades down the hill and they're going off underneath a truck. Jeez. And uh, George, George got, hit, uh, got hit in the leg. Oh, no way. One, I right. yeah, yeah. So that was crazy. Uh, didn't really how bad, did, how bad was he injured? Wasn't too bad. I don't think he really even realized until later. Uh, just a chunk went in there pretty Oh, deep. okay. That's crazy. So it wasn't too but bad. It wasn't too bad. But okay. the funny thing was, going in and out of the truck, it seemed like I, I could see, you know, uh, Tracer's – I could tell he was getting shot at pretty close, you know what I mean? So yeah. coming in and out of the truck, from the bed of the truck to the back seat, we had an interpreter with us. I wish I could remember this dude's name, man, but he really wasn't much bigger than me. Yeah. And he didn't like being in the truck because it was loud. And uh, it oh, was yeah. beat. And uh, so he kept getting out. And with him rolling the hand grenades down, I kept putting it in front of the tire because I was afraid that, you know what I mean? So in and out of the truck, he's there. Well, I'm going back and forth um, yelling at Chris, yelling at the, and George. And uh, I'm, I keep tripping over this this guy. <laughs> and uh, it, it was just a nightmare of a situation where every time I'd go to run by, I would fall down and I'd pick him up, throw him back in the truck. And it's like, don't get out of the truck. And the next thing I know, I'm tripping him where he didn't want to stay in the truck. Didn't he know that? I mean, he knew it was up armored, right? I mean, uh, he, I that's probably the that, safest place to be. I mean, I was running Pell Tours and it was a very loud environment inside of that so he, tent but, the, but, the, but the Turp didn't know that he was in an up armored vehicle that, you know, he could, he, he should stay inside sure. and not get out. Or I'm not sure, but he did not want to stay in there, and I couldn't keep him in there long enough. I remember at one time the vehicle uh, was actually left in neutral and it started to roll, and I'm uh, and I'm, I'm realizing I'm going beside it, and I look, and uh, George is jumping back in the driver's seat, so we almost ran off a almost fell off a cliff. I mean all the. I mean, all the chaos was happening. Yeah. We, we got to set the parking brake. Or not, I was going to say, they're all know. manual transmissions, so it's not like, you know, yeah, you, somebody probably just bumped it into neutral, or I don't, who knows what happened. That's crazy. In the end, it was pretty good. Got a couple gun runs with the A-10s, dropped some bombs up top. Pretty heavy casualties on our side as well. And an OGA, OGA guy got hit in the neck on that one. It was it was, it was a crazy it thing. Or? He didn't make it. Oh, he so, didn't make it. Okay. He did not. No. Nope. Um, Dang it. Yeah. You know, that happened right in front of our truck, too, man, which was incre- incredible because it was a pretty steep train. And then on the other, behind us, it was it was a, it dropped off. Uh, must yeah. have been low ground water or something like that. I really don't know. Um, but yeah, those trails um, were just crazy. 
Yeah, it was nuts, man. But, uh, you so, know, that was the first time and only time I've ever seen uh, – we had AC-130 flying in the daytime for us uh, oh, really? to get out of there. Yeah, that was pretty cool. That's um, good, yeah. I didn't shoot – I mean, th- that says a lot because that's not optimal for them. <laughs> no. Uh-uh. You, you know you know, you're in a bad way if, they're, if those guys are hanging out Yeah, in the daytime for sure. So what the, happened uh, – uh, go ahead. Okay. Well, no, I was going to say that the, the the brand new truck that we had, oh yeah, <laughs> which was, I, I, got peppered up no so bad, and, you know, didn't have any tire. Like, uh, I mean, it was on the run flats. I mean, it was just shot up really bad. You couldn't see out of the windows. It looked like someone just laid an RPK right in Chris's window. You know, it was crazy. God, and uh, I couldn't believe no rounds came through. If they did, they didn't hit anybody. Thank God, you know. Yeah. But um. Testament to the testament we i'm looking at windows. this truck and i told i told chris i was like hey man we don't have a choice i'm going to drop one this thing leave it here let's go like get everything out of it we're going to blow this thing and i was yeah you know what i mean let's drop this, right, right. Let's drop this thing right <laughs> so we started to collect everything out and he calls back you know just to let them know what they're doing they're like no do not if it runs you get it out of there i don't care what you do <laughs> So I think we hooked the tow strap to it and half drove it, half whatever, and got it out of there. And yeah, those made it for a long cheap. trip. But... Those were no, not cheap. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but I really wanted to drop on one. I'm yeah, for sure. Especially a brand new one. Uh, right, but, right. Yeah. I know getting back and looking at it, I wish I had pictures of that thing. It was just amazing to me how many rounds that thing absorbed. Oh, my uh, God. But it was right in the middle of the zone. You know, man. That was crazy. <laughs> I wonder – it makes me think – and as soon as you – I didn't want to cut you off at the beginning, but I, it makes me wonder – Cause you know how it is with, when you're working with OGA and there's so many locals there and they're not all of them are upstanding citizens, you know, some are shady. Yeah. I'm wondering if there was any possibility that they, I calmed up to those guys that were up on the, with the hot spots, you know, and just said, Oh, you know, Hey, make sure yeah. when you're at this location, fake a flat tire or, you know, some sort of, I wonder if they set you up. Does that, did it ever cross your mind that maybe it was a, a setup or, or what? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, for sure. You know, all kind I mean? of things go through your mind later well, on. Kind you know, of, well, that's kind of coincidental that, like, you know, and it, it's not it's not past the, you know, um, the realm of possibility that they did it on purpose or something. You know, because like I said, there's they're not all yeah. good guys that we're working with. You know, yeah, some of those local Crazy. dudes are kind of changed sides a little too much. It's yeah, anyway. almost too good of a location to be right. You know, yeah, you guys are like right, you right in the kill zone, and yeah. You know, so you end up. Crazy. You end up towing that one out of there and then just making it all the way back to work. Yeah, we towed it back. Uh, it went well until the next day. By the time we got everything back, you know what I mean? And uh, I do remember helicopters being a problem. And when you start firing, you know, over there, everyone wants to play. Everyone yeah, wants yeah. to get in a fight. Oh, yeah. And I didn't have comms with these Cobras that came overhead. And I was Dang. pretty upset with them because, you know, we had guys on the um, high ground. We are still taking pop shots at us. And I was trying to get aircraft in on them. But I didn't want to shoot with the helicopters buzzing around. I didn't get a chance to engage them. Uh, so we just rolled on through it. So, um, you know, a little, little frustration right there. But, you know, yeah, for sure. I guess that's what happens when everyone's kind of eager to get in there. But haven't really worked out the comms for them. So. Yeah, I wonder if, like, somebody, like, Chris probably caught, I mean, they already knew what you're, what was going on. So they're like, hey, you two Cobras go out there and help out. They might yeah. not have the right freak, you know, or something. Or Yeah. Yeah. Anyway. Crazy. Good time. Uh, there was another thing I was thinking of that r- I, reminded me of you. Um, and Mark kind of brought it up last time, or he might have brought it up, I don't know, whenever. But um, you got in, you're the only guy I know of that got into a hand to hand like tussle with somebody. Did yeah. You, what, tell me, was that when you were at Recce or were you at Battalion at that time? That was, uh, that was Recce. I was with Recce. Okay. With that, with that, that's yeah, that's right. We went from battalion to recce, and uh, that was it. Um, you feel I, I don't want to pressure you. No. Do you feel like talking about that, or is that just something you want no, to talk about? No, it's fine. Yeah, it's no, it's fine. It's good. Okay. Um, it was just a just a crazy time, as you can imagine. But uh, this was around Kaust, I want to say. Okay, I don't quite remember if it was JBAT or Kaust, man, maybe I do, but I just don't. Um, and uh, Billy Otter was actually um out there as well and i think it was like a handover or something like that where he's still in theater and i was still in theater okay i don't quite remember why and i think but he was we a were, at that time or something that's what it was and we're doing like a simultaneous 
kind of hit or something where um, they were hitting one, we're hitting the other, and we we're so close that we were sharing supporting assets. Okay. So we had 18 with 30s and AWT and probably some fixed wing, if I remember right. Well, he, they were the primary uh, objective, and they were uh, he had the assets, and um, we were a secondary objective, which was which was good. It worked out great. But um, this was a weird time where this is when they're doing the kind of escalation of force. You might remember some of that. Where for sure, even even before that, we were doing even warning shots. We were doing CS. We were doing other things other than just doing what Ranger does best. Right. And, so, um, very restricting. I remember very like it was, it was hard, and hard to fight a war like that. It, it was. And, you know, the guys, the battalion guys just are good at what they do. And we were going on mission after mission and they were, you know, they were uh, killing dudes every night. Mm. I mean, it was just hot. It was a good time of year. They were wanting to fight back and right. just getting at it. And we actually got a, Message down and said, "Hey guys, don't kill anyone else. Like, stop killing people if you if you can help it." Jesus. And I never, you know, that's amazing to me. But that's where we're at, right? In a war, like it seems. I mean, I guess at, at that time it was more they were trying to transition from a war into some sort of peacekeeping thing or when the hearts nation and building or something. Or, yeah, yeah, like please, please, you know, do what you're doing, but stop, you know, killing people. And it was uh Jeez. so. Everyone's real cautious and careful. So that kind of sets the stage, right, for the whole thing. Yeah. So uh, we go out, we hit two different two different objectives at the same time. And I have this backside, like, you know, JTAC, you know, we try to get up on the high ground, up on the roof, but we go up with the snipers or whatever we can do. I happen to be on this backside um, with another, like, a, a FO. And he had split off around a corner. So what we're looking at on imagery and kind of what we're planning on didn't really work out real well. So I was just kind of by myself, which is not not great. I could I knew the other dude was behind me, but I couldn't really see him. And as I'm pulling security on this backside, there's this small building in front of me that's like built into this compound that we're raiding. Mm -hmm. I don't have assets overhead. Billy's got him over there, so I can't really see what's going on. So I'm just kind of taking care of my little sector there. And I hear something in the building. So, of course, it's got my attention. So yeah. I'm watching the walls. I'm kind of watching the guy behind me. I'm trying to watch him here and everything is crazy. And uh, all of a sudden in front of me, I see this head pop out of the window. This dude sticks his head out of the window. And I don't think he could see me. I think he was just looking around. So I kind of pie the corner, uh, you know, pie the side a little bit. And I look up in there and it's just a small like a 14 by 14 hole. It's not very big, I don't think. Or it doesn't appear that. Well, all of a sudden, this dude <laughs> shoots out of the window and lands right in front of me and uh, looks at me. And I don't think he can – I can't tell if he can see me or not. Yeah. And I'm looking at him, and he's looking at me, and, and I go to, like, say, hey, you know, and he takes off running uh, down this hill, right? He's running, and it's a terrace drop off hill like that and i didn't realize that yeah. um so we were you know i don't think warning shots for something that we're still the one but i did them i did warning shots with this guy i shot in front of him to stop him as i'm yelling at him yeah, yeah. and uh very ineffective way to actually get someone to stop oh for I'm sure right. especially those like, guys like, i'm out of here yeah you know so that that is a horrible idea i don't think it'll work unless it's a lot of rounds from an aircraft I did that, and because uh, that's what we had been doing, right? Yeah. And this guy just kept going, um, and I realized I gotta go. I gotta chase this dude down. There's nobody else around. Yeah. There's no one else yeah. around, and I could tell. Uh, I think it was Duncan, Randy Duncan, was this. He was uh, maybe up behind me, up further on the hill. I knew he was in the general location, and I took off after this guy, and uh, through the terrace, and I had a one seventeen. I think it was a fox in, the, in my rug. Big radio, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And I'm running my stuff, and I'm running down this hill. Well, there's a terrace. I didn't run in there, and I kept falling on them. And they, this thing kept smashing me in the back of the head, <laughs> digging me into the dirt. So I'd get up, and I'd take off running again after this dude. And I could see him doing the same thing. Yeah. And eventually, I'd get down the end, and it was a big corner that he'd run down the hill into this corner. And these big high walls. And there's no way he's getting over these walls. And I right. chased him right down this corner. But he's, I can't see him anymore, JD. I don't know where he's at. And uh, 
turns out there's these ditches down there, like those sewage dishes or whatever. And he's laying down there. I didn't see him. So as I'm kind of coming through, he had just popped up on me. So it was a, it was like a pretty close in thing enough where he could grab my weapon, you know, yeah. and I'm by myself. So that's a bad situation to be in. Sure. So there's actually one that would have been, you know, probably pretty decent for maybe a transition to a pistol or something like that. Right. Or, and this is a big guy, man. And he's a pretty big dude. I, I'm carrying a lot of weight and, uh, I'm, I'm, and I'm a for people that dude. don't know, you're yeah. you're a smaller guy. Like you're a shorter, you're strong. Yeah, I'm but you're two, shorter yeah. dude. So like, yeah, yeah. You had a lot of leverage on me for sure. Yeah. So um, I'm trying to get this guy off my weapon, and I realize I can't. And what I can see is I can hear Sergeant Duncan, and I can see laser bouncing off of this dude uh -huh. right here. So I'm like, oh shit! So he's about to light this dude up. So um, it, it, didn't he, have a, he may or may not know you're there. So you're. Yeah, might yeah, too, along with it, yeah, yeah. So you know, it's all just all that chaos, you know. So yeah, um, I ended up uh, kind of leaning into the guy and letting off some rounds into his uh, lower, lower right or lower left here, uh -huh. um, and that definitely had him let go of the weapon for sure. Okay, uh, as he went down, um, he ended up dying. But two missions before that, we were doing a lot of uh, offset, like uh. Uh, roping in or heel, heel copping in into um, and then walking in 5k or something like that right um and it was smoking the hell out of me and i was looking at where i could cut weight and where i cut weight was a pistol i left my pistol at the house back to the hitch and I was a mistake. lot of guys did though Not, there weren't a whole lot of people that carried pistols at that time you know I don't no remember. there wasn't you know but i know that was a tool a lethal tool of my you know that was probably important you know what i mean so um anyway that would have been a use case right there for it for sure luckily that worked out pretty well for me um you know but this is right at the time when they're like please don't um please don't kill anybody you know and then the jtac goes <laughs> so you're trying to do them. everything in your in your power pretty much to like yeah take this guy it's down crazy. without killing him but I mean, yeah. he, kind of, he kind of sealed his own fate by grabbing your weapon i mean once once a guy grabs your rifle you know that's almost like your your cue to okay that's I, have to yeah. protect, I, I don't want him taking my weapon from me because they can use it against me. So I got to do something. Yeah. You, know, you had, you had to do what you had to do, you know? Yeah. yeah of been course it'd been easier situation. with a pistol, but, but yeah, yeah. man. Pretty it had to be tough though, Pretty because tough. you like you're, you're, you had to be tired. You had to be, you know, you had fell like God knows how many times down that terrorist hill, <laughs> you know? So you're probably smoked. This guy's fighting for his life. You're fighting for your life. I mean, it just came down to you, I don't know if you want to get too you know crazy about it. You had that the drive, you had that, you know, that will to live that you weren't mm -hmm. gonna let this guy get you, you know. It's but funny, you, you know, you take some time to reflect on something like that. Um and you know, you make decisions pretty quick. Luckily, I think I made the right decision there. I know sure. I made the right decision there. For sure. And uh, you know, but you get a chance to kind of, you know, reflect on something like that and you realize, you know all your training that does build up all the things that you're taught, you realize that when you are trained well, you will react like you were training. Yeah. Which is fantastic. And it's a little bit, you know, as I say, you know, you train like you fight and you know, you'll, you'll fight like you train or whatever that is that you say. Sure, sure. There's a lot of truth to that, man. I mean, there yeah. really is because there wasn't a whole lot of thought that I remember going through of what I needed to do at that time. I just didn't like that. I got myself in that situation without a range. Sure. That's, that's a bad idea. You know, so um, learned a lot. Uh, learned a lot that entire rotation. Learned a lot every time I went out with the guys. You learned about, a lot about yourself, about your ranger buddies, and about the. Uh, uh, you just, you know, about it just makes you better and better. I mean, it really yeah. does. And um, so I, I just all of those, the time spent um, working at the 17th has just really been the, the highlights uh, for yeah. me for sure. So what happened? So you were at the seventeenth. You did. We deployed a bunch of times. Um, where did you go? Did you retire out of the seventeenth, or did you go somewhere else before you retired? I, I retired out of the seven twentieth. So oh, that's yeah, right. so I left. Yep, yeah, yep. So that's I left right. out I there. Forgot about that. Yeah. Talk, yeah. Tell me about. Tell me about that transition from the seventeenth to the seven twentieth. Yeah, that was just different. You know what I mean? So, um, man, you know that's that's a that's a different mentality, different people and uh i love my uh my 720th buddies and my ass rock buds but 
you know, we came from, you know, the 17th. We didn't really have anybody but the Army. That was it. Right. I mean, you know, we had each other there. But to be honest with you, um, I, I didn't train with you. I didn't train right. with Mark. And I trained with my Army buddies. And I, right. I got to know how, you know, we trained together, not our relationship. So For sure. Um, I believe that the mentality with, the you know, the 720th and the rest of AFSOC and stuff, you know, they did a lot of training with themselves and then mm -hmm. deployed into a situation and then supported the customer from there. Um, the way we did stuff with the 17th made us successful, 100% yeah. successful. It made us sure. uh, part of that team that was about to go down range and do things. So, yeah. you know, huge. So I was actually yeah, at I mean, the... I've never talked to anybody that um, doesn't have the same sentiment. Like you just, yeah. You, when you train with those guys, you just, you have to, it, it brings you up to another level. Like, and not, not only that, yeah. but like they feel more comfortable with you going down range with them. They're like, you know, as opposed to somebody they've never seen before, that guy could be super awesome. And usually they were like, they're usually like, you know, if we get a CCT guy or a PJ or something, they were really stellar troops. Like they were awesome guys. But if the Rangers had not seen you, it was hard to break through and, and get their trust because they don't know who you are from anybody. So yeah. it was tough for them to kind of, they had to kind of prove themselves in the beginning, whether they wanted to or not. I mean, they, they ended up doing it because they were great. Um, but, um, but guys like us kind of had it easy because we trained the whole time with them, you know, 48 weeks out of the year, we're with our army customer. So then they're like, Oh yeah, of course, JD. Yeah. He's, or Hey, here's Maddie. Yeah. Come on. In. And we're, come on, let's go yeah. do this. Let's go do this training. So it was a little bit easier for us to kind of crack through or at least gain that trust or, you know, yeah, work with those guys. Yeah, so, put yeah. the work out. Like, understand work how like, when he went to because I mean Matt Schleich was even talking about when he was at the seven twenty of his little. It was a different, different world, you know, different mentality. Maybe not better, or worse, whatever. No, who, who's to say? But um, just a way different kind of way of looking at things on how to how to operate. Yeah, yeah. I remember so, that. We, uh, go ahead. That's good. I I remember that transition from uh, ACC to AFSOC. Yeah, yeah. When we were making that uh, transition, um, I was just leaving. I was I like, just leaving? I was getting close to my end there at the 17th yeah. uh, from the ASOS to an STS. And, uh, or at least going over to AFSOC. I think we're still – anyway, ACC had cut off our funding, if you don't – if you recall. And yeah. AFSOC hasn't picked – hasn't palm for I do remember that. Uh, I do I remember know. that, yeah. Dude. We had guys. That was. That I remember guys time. putting gas in a GOV with their own cars. Yeah. We would steal. Uh, we would steal toilet paper from the chow hall. And, <laughs> right. Right, and then or bring yeah. our own toilet paper in. Um, it was crazy. We uh, was Mark rough. and I. Yeah, Mark and I did a couple of trips down here to Florida to train with the seven twentieth to work on some uh, BAO stuff. And we did. We were on orders. We just come down and do it, and yeah. then go home because the unit couldn't afford to pay us. To do but anyway. you needed to get the training, but then you, yeah. And, but you didn't have the money to go officially. So yeah, you just went down. Isn't that crazy? That's, kind of, the, that's what I'm talking about. That's the kind of stuff I'm talking about with you guys. And that was what made it so great was yeah. that these, there are, there are, and in, in the air forces defense or whoever's defense, the leadership's defense, had you had anything happened, uh, if we were deployed without orders or you would have gone down there without orders, or if you wouldn't have done all these things without official approval, had it not worked out the way it did, some, something could have happened. Some bad things could have happened. Thank God they yeah. didn't. But on the flip side, you wouldn't have been as trained as you, uh, are, you were, you wouldn't have had the experience you were, you wouldn't have been able to help your team or, um, provide the kind of support you could without kind of breaking those rules. So, um, I think it's, it's heading, it's like exponentially better now than it was when we were there. I mean, it's like yeah. they're, you know, I think I'm pretty sure anyway. Um, but yeah, I mean, like you said, we, you had to do what you had to do. And if you wanted to get that training, if you wanted to, you know, support your team, you kind of had to, you know, do it unofficially sometimes, you know, yeah, so, I mean, it all kind of caught up and it all, it all worked out, which is good for us, but yeah, I could have gone sideways, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> for sure. So yeah. with the 720, you, you were in the fire shop. Yeah. You were, working, you were just, uh, what were you guys doing? They're just running their JTAC program. 
Yeah, I was a chief C. Yeah, chief C. I did some of the core duties with some of the uh, contract cast stuff. I did the core on that and uh, uh, JTAC I contractor program. I did the core on that and then the uh, what is it? Uh, what's what's our tracking program for? Oh, like, tags. oh uh, are they still using that? Um, yeah, tactics or something, or the tactics. the, the FSOC okay. tactics was called. Uh, I don't remember. I don't know. Dang. Pimp was Dang. Pimp wasn't running that one, wasn't he? Yeah, yeah. So Pimp and I worked together on that. So I was a core on that as well. I, I spent a lot of time doing core duties, managing those, and then as a chief C and a chief uh, program manager there um, for for a while until I retired out of seven twenty down there. So that was yes. good too because all that. Um, you know, working with the army and doing all the stuff up there in the ASOS, you only know what you know up there. Sure. And then what was able to see and why Mark and I would come down the 720th and get training with these guys, with uh, Mike Branston and Donnie Nichols and yeah, those yeah, guys, yeah. it's because they were on, they're leading the technology, like on how to do some of this Gucci stuff with like the OTOs right. and they're running around with all these, you know, uh, administration coordinate, administrating coordinates with piss off. They're doing all that stuff down here. So we're coming down to try to get a piece of that. And uh, what was really cool at the end to really retire out of here, I got to see all of those technologies kind of come together and be a part of it. And uh, nice. that was that was fantastic, like learning too on, at the very end. So Yeah, yeah. Good, you know. what, um, I, we can talk about this um, when you and Kevin and, and Mark and I get together. But um, <laughs> I want to talk about the boat trip oh man and not yeah. now not we'll not we'll, we'll save oh, that man. for next next time yeah. i want to hear more about that but i also want to hear about um but the thing i like the thing that was the most impressed me about you forget about your your work like you were you know stellar jtac you were great just soldier if you want to say that what a warrior you know whatever you want to say um but you were also you like to challenge yourself and like we all kind of did at that time but like you went above and beyond like i remember one time in crypt Tell me the distance because I never I can't remember what it was, but you you kayaked for down the sound. How long? How far did you kayak in to work that day? Like you were, uh, where'd you start? Remember, you know what I'm talking about? Do you remember? Oh yeah, that? no, we did do that. Yeah, it was like I don't remember how far that was. Honestly, like all day or something. Or I just like, drug my kayak down there and kayak in. <laughs> you, you, just like that. Like you, that. Bike, you would bike for like miles and miles just to get into work. I mean, it was just. That yeah. was this kind of a testament on how you you and I asked you I would ask you why you do it and you're just like I gotta I gotta challenge myself or I gotta make sure I can you know do the extreme stuff to hang out because we were all just kind of trying to keep up with the Rangers frankly I mean if you want to if you want to yeah, you, know, you want to yeah. break it down to something we're all just trying to keep up with those guys so you know you you felt I think you felt that you needed to do these extreme things to stay you know you know at that heightened level, yeah. which is that crazy? perfect. I mean, that's what you want to do, you know? I used to, I used to walk into work. Remember that? <laughs> yeah, that's right. Yeah. When I lived up in Midland, I'd cut through all the ranges and walk to the 17. <laughs> and that was my, that was my 20 miler for the six months or whatever. I was like, yeah, oh, I'll yeah. just walk to work, man. It's, I got this. And and most of the time it was okay. Like it was, it, it just kind of sucked a little bit, but I'd start off early, early, early in the morning, like three in the morning, and I'd walk in, and that would be my PT for the day, and it's good to go. And I smoked, I'd catch a ride home, and then I'd do it again later. You know, I mean, whatever happens. Yeah. But I did make a mistake one time, and uh, where it had rained really, really heavy. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and uh, all the creeks and everything were swollen, and <laughs> I was like, you know, I'm gonna fuck, man, I'm walking in. So I walk in there, and this one creek that I crossed you know, probably five or six times before it was really high now. And it was almost like yeah. a river, you know, and I got a ruck on and I'm looking at this thing and it's two 30 in the morning. And I'm like, it's a bad idea, man, <laughs> but you're going to go anyway. Right. Yeah. You're so going. I take my final thing and I'm like, all right, let's go tuck my compass there and my maps in my cargo pocket. And I get walking and it starts getting deeper and deeper. And, uh, <laughs> I eventually go under, and uh, luckily I undid my uh, my waist strap, and I didn't have a chest strap anyhow. Um, I may have even loosened up one of my sleeves or one of my uh, shorts. I don't remember that, but I went under, and I was like, if I just keep walking, I think I'll make the other side. <laughs> yeah. 
And I kept going and kept going. And I remember at one time, JD, I'm thinking, I might not make it to the other side. I might <laughs> oh, trip over. Oh, God. Something. So <laughs> I let, I, I loosen my rock strap up and I come up and catch a breath and I see the bank is not far. Yeah. But I'd moved down a significant amount by that. Oh, time. sure. So, yeah. Yeah. So I crawl through this thing. I'm a mess at this point. I'm like, you're an idiot. Like, that's not a good idea. I strap up the rock and I look up this bank and it's like a six or eight foot bank and it's all mud wall. You know what I mean? I just yeah. want to suck again. Oh. So I get to crawling up this bank and I get to the top ex exhausted, 100% exhausted in the middle of Fort Benning. Nobody knows I'm there. Like Cindy, I may have told her that I was going. I don't remember. And, yeah. and now Nobody I'm knows there. your route. Nobody even knows where to begin no. looking for you. Even if we, even if no. we didn't show up. Just a dumb eye, just dumb. You know what I mean? I'm probably out of yeah. water at this time. Who knows? And uh, I uh, was like, well, at least I still have, you know, my compass and my map. Well, no, my map's gone. It was, uh, it was tied off. It was tied off, but it was no longer tied off. So yeah. I didn't do a good job there. And my compass was around my neck. And while I was climbing up the bank, I'd smashed it in, and it got filled with mud. It was a little savvy. I was like, oh, fuck. <laughs> So now I'm like, well, I think I gotta go that way. And uh, it wasn't bad. It wasn't bad to navigate, but I was just tired and hungry. And yeah. you know, I mean all of the above. Almost died, the, you know. Yeah, that was stupid. You know, I mean, just absolutely stupid. But uh, I made that one, I guess, uh skin of my teeth. But <laughs> but that's what I'm saying. Like you you always were pushing yourself to those limits. And at this time it almost it almost caught up with you. I remember on that one specifically, I got to the squadron and I, uh, for some reason, I just decided to sleep because I got there a little bit before I would have. And I slept on the front because I was just exhausted. Yeah. And I remember waking up and folks were coming in and no one even paid me any mind or even there to said I was even there. Like, just like, this yeah, of a, it's just, it was like, oh, this normal. Yeah. <laughs> it was good. So, that's oh, fun. man, that's awesome. That is awesome. Uh, those, yeah. those stories are amazing. I, I'm so glad that we got to talk about not only, I love talking about 17th and Ranger stuff, but I'm, I want people to know what you guys did at third ID also. I mean, like I said, I'll, I'll reiterate there, like it was such an overwhelming, uh, show of force that you guys did. I mean, it was, let's say who, who else was in third ID at that time? I know Kevin went, Kevin, Kevin was over there with you guys too, right? Yeah, Maybe not Kevin, with, with you, but I know John he deployed Stockman. with the, Who's that? John Stockman, I think. Was Stockman, there, right? Yep, Stockman. I don't remember. If did I Greg Ray go with you guys? Not. Did he deploy with you? I, for some reason, I don't think he did. Okay. If he did, I don't remember. Okay. I don't remember. I don't recall. I know he wasn't there with me uh, when we were rolling through. That was uh, uh, me, Fairchild. Man, what a fantastic human being right there. Yeah. That, that I'd dude, love to uh, talk to him. Need to sit down and have some chat. I mean, he's just got he's he's a uh, he's a good and, and storyteller. Speaking of good storytellers, uh, Kevin's going to be a great one too, man. Yeah, uh, I'm looking forward to that to too. That. He's just he's just good with that stuff. So I know, I know. I mean, that, you know, just as well as I do, half the stories we tell are stuff that we did that was horrible. You know, like I know, oh, yeah. like that's like that. like that story where you walk through the water. I mean, or like <laughs> or deployments or like. Tra the training missions were the worst. I mean, like oh, yeah. walks walk forever, or you know, yeah. And I, we did we did one in Tora Bora. Not Tora Bora uh, <laughs> oh yeah, <laughs> yeah, Tora Bora, uh, just outside of Vegas. Uh, thank you. Yeah, we did one out there in Tora. I thought the damn team was going to die. It was horrible, <laughs> horrible. Yeah, it's funny, funny story on that. But uh, crazy. Yeah, because they used to, it's really with Ricky, man. They would make they would, I think. Uh, let's put it this way. You talk about learning. They would put you in situations that they knew you were supposed to survive. But if you didn't mm -hmm. prepare correctly or if you weren't in shape or whatever, you were not. It was it was hit or miss if you were going to, you know, didn't want to get evac or what. They weren't going to let you die. But, you, but like you had to like, you know, bring a shitload of food. You had to be in good shape. You had to like, you know, you had to have all these skills. And that, yeah, I mean, it was. The recce was the funnest and the hardest time I think I've ever had. Like with battalion, it was, it was, it was hard, but it was like, you're in and out. It was real quick things. Uh, except, you know, you would do like yeah. an infield seizure and then you come out. But with recce, they're like, all right, you're going to go 
walk for a day or two, reconnaissance, do reconnaissance on this airfield for a day or two, walk back. You know, it's, it, was, it was a bigger ordeal, I guess, is what I'm trying to say. <sighs> All right. Well, hey, uh, thanks for doing this, man. I appreciate it. That Those stories were f- awesome. Um, and you're going to be good for uh, the fifth because Mark – Mark has stuff going on on Sundays. That's going to be me, you, Mark, and Kevin. Yep. Yep. <laughs> you, better be block, good, eh? you better block three hours, man. I know, right? Crazy. Crazy. <laughs> I'm looking forward to it. There's so much stuff that you, that you, Mark, basically everybody I've talked to have done that no one knows about, right? And, and I'm not, and I don't want, and I don't want to make anybody, I don't want to like expose or I don't want to tell any stories that people don't want out there. But yeah. I I feel like nobody – it's like you can't find hardly any articles about the 17th and about guys like you and guys like Kevin and Mark. And, like, I think people need to know what kind of fucking unit that is. Like, it's a badass unit, and there's badass yeah. people there, and they're doing great stuff. They're doing great work. So I'm just trying to kind of, like, expose people to that, to, you know, those kind of stories so, they so you know, people can be recognized for their hard work, you know? I couldn't think of a better person to do it either, man. Well – I hope well, I can hope I can do him justice. I appreciate it. But well, you just, you will. And what I've seen so far is fantastic. And it's, it's dude, it's, that's great, man. Because uh, uh, you know everybody, it, you're a good center of gravity for that for sure. I hope so, yeah, man. That is I, yeah, fantastic. I hope so. so I'm excited to kind of see where it goes and hearing some of that. Like I never heard about uh, uh, Schleich's deal. Me neither. Whereas, you know what I mean? I didn't know yeah. that. I didn't know. Um, you know, and I guess. I don't know, man. It's, and then hearing it's, the details on Mark about Mark's injury, I knew he fell off the building. Yeah. I didn't know all that stuff about Jack Sperling, you know, being in the hospital with him. And I didn't know, you know, there's so no. many. And, and I, I heard about you getting in that tussle with that ki- that guy, but yeah. I didn't know any of the details. So, like, that was like, yep. man, I get it. That, and that's a harrowing kind of a crazy situation where you had to, like, think. You, you didn't have time to, like, figure out what was, you know, you didn't have time to mull everything over. You know, you had to be like, this guy's yeah. trying to and take my weapon i gotta do something and yeah and i did i definitely didn't hear about that ambush i had no idea about that ambush <laughs> I, I think i might have heard something maybe somewhere somewhere but I, that's just me that's just like no i get yeah, it i mean like, i'm so glad to hear it i mean, i love it i i get it like uh you, you hear bits and pieces about what's going on down range but you, we were all so busy if you weren't down there doing it you were right. so busy I think we had guys in Iraq, we had guys in Afghanistan, we had guys all over, yeah. um, and but you know, guys in Battalion, guys in reconnaissance. It's like, so you didn't really. It's hard to really track anybody, you know. Sure. And then you're and in. So. I tell you, the real reason is because you guys are so squared away, and you guys are the real people. Throw around that term, silent professional, kind of yeah. lackadaisically, you know. But that's what you guys are. That's kind of what we all are. We're all like, yeah, I did it, but I'm not gonna it was over. It's done with, it was a cool situation, but I'm not going to like, Hey, come here, man. Let me tell you what I did over and overseas. You know, none of you yeah. guys are like that. So that's yep. why I'm kind of like giving you an opportunity to, I'm asking you no one, you know, you're not volunteering the information and that's, that's yeah. how it should be. You know, you, I don't, I'm not, I'm, you know, you guys aren't in here tooting your own horns. I'm, I want you to tell the story. I'm, I'm bringing the story out of you. So it's a, yep. it's a way better situation than, you know, if you were to like, tell everybody, you know, what you did and which is, yeah. and that's what I love about you guys. You're silent professionals, you do your job and it's just, you know, you, you just, you're humble. I love it. That's, but yeah. Well, thanks for doing this. Um, yeah, and thanks to also for your men- mentorship over the years, man. We, we all look up to you quite a bit. Wow. Dude. I love so. you guys, man. I, it, it, you, like I said, that was the, the absolute funnest time I've ever had in my entire life let alone the military i mean with you guys in that office okay. at that time awesome. that was like i <laughs> i've never loved to go to work more than that time in my life like that was i walk in That's you true. know just walk in the office and i knew you guys were going to be there i knew it was going to be fun i knew you, there was going to be <laughs> cool story what, what did you just do what kind of training did you just do oh man it's awesome you know i was going to hear yeah. cool, cool stories it was the best the best that's cool thank you all right brother right on man all right bro be good to be safe. All right, man. I'm looking, I'm looking forward to the next one. Me too. Bye. Have a good one.